defend the world from the return of the Shadow Kings, just as the brave Pharaoh did 5,000 years ago. YouTube, Vintage Yu Gi Oh! here today, and we're going to go through what I deem my 10 most rarest items I own with some honorable mentions. So we'll get right into it, and I'll kind of go through my mindset on each item. So, up first, and as an honorable mention, um, Retro Pack 2. Um, blisters and three pack mini boxes came with either gores or green baboon i think green baboon was with the blisters and gores was with the mini boxes but what a lot of people don't know is the secrets the promos were also released as secrets within the packs as pullable cards so they're missing the limited edition text box so um there are definitely tens of these cards, but you just don't see them pop up a lot, and a lot of people don't know the difference. So this made an honorable mention cut uh, on my list of rarest items. Up next, a card that is just impossible to find. We have a Magic Formula, first edition from Gladiator's Assault. Almost all of the secrets from this set are very low population, and there are just so many that it's um, any of them are hard, hard to pull. Um, but this is the chase card from the set, and it has a population of 10, I believe. So if you want to get one, um, you're going to have to pay up uh, to even get one out of the woodworks. And luckily enough, I was uh, able to buy this a few years ago. So this makes the second honorable mention slot. And then um, an item that I got in a trade that is a rare item that contains a lot of rare cards, such as Blue Eyes Shining, Dragon, Dragon Master Knight, um, some epic reprinted cards, and Secret Rare is a Retro Pack 2 box. And it was just a Euro exclusive, and you don't see many of them floating around, so that made my honorable mention for a booster box. So another item that made the honorable mention list is the booster cases that held the 12 boxes from the LOB and MRD case purchase out in LA uh, that I led the charge on. Um, we parted out the boxes to many people all over the world, but I got to keep the actual cardboard boxes that the individual 24 pack boxes resided in. So they're just a really cool part of history. And I can't imagine that there are too many of those floating around still, because you know, who kept a cardboard box 20 years ago when these boxes were supposed to be sold. So just really unique items that have all the information on the outside of the boxes and the logo and everything like that. So that made an honorable mention spot. And then you guys have seen the uncut sheets that I have in other videos, but still really not one of one items, but still very unique. With Pharaoh Servant, Labyrinth of Nightmare, Invasion of Chaos, and Dark Crisis, um, little mini uncut sheets that were given out to regional winners. Um, back in the day, um, all the sheets are kind of cut differently, so they're they're almost unique, but I have seen duplicates, but still really cool items that you can't pull. You can't just, you know, buy a booster box or five booster boxes and guarantee getting it. So just a, a unique item that I really like. And then the last honorable mention slot are a few prize cards that I have. Cyberstein, uh, it didn't make my actual top 10 list because it is a card that has a population of over 20 gem mint 10 copies so um, I have quite a few things that have uh, less gem mint 10 copies than Cyberstein. Um, this full golf is a mint 9 if it was a mint 10 probably would have made the cut it's definitely um, definitely low population but I didn't want my entire top 10 list to be prize cards so I kind of just wanted to showcase these as an honorable mention Gold Sarcophagus, once again, there's only like two or three in Mint 9, and then I think one gem at 10. So still very rare and definitely deserving to be spotlighted. Doom Caliber, similar situation, one or two 10s and just a few 9s. And then Dark End Dragon is definitely the uh, most accessible of the first seven prize cards. Um, quite a few 10s, a lot of 9s, and definitely just a lot more in general copies floating around of those. So that's my honorable mention list, and now we will get into my top 10 list. A lot of these can be interchanged. Uh, definitely going to be partial here on the first one. We have an EMI Machine King, but what makes this on the list is that it has no name, not even a name stamp. 
should be an ultra title there that says Machine King, and it's just simply no named. Um, machines are my favorite card. Uh, it's probably my second favorite machine. And um, there was a craze for EMI a little while ago, and it's kind of calmed down now. But you just don't even see a lot of mint copies, and to have a misprint of one of my favorite cards definitely had to make the cut of uh, top 10 rarest items, as I've never seen another one. Number nine on my list, uh, you guys have seen this on my Instagram recently, if you follow me there. Uh, bottomless Trap Hole from Champion Pack 4, uh, Population 2 and Gem Mint 10. So I'm holding the 100% of the population of Gem Mint 10 copies of this. I think there's been seven or eight others graded, and none of those have even gotten a nine. Um, so in my opinion, that makes these two very rare as... You know, you're not going to normally send a card in unless you think it's going to get, you know, an 8, 9, or 10. And I think there's um, about four eights, and then there's a couple seven sixes and fives. So for these to be the only copies that are 9 or 10, um, definitely had to make the cut on list of rare cards. All right, coming in at number 8, um, as a collective whole, I have three... Terminate Pack 3 Supers that are in Gym at 10. Anti Regeki is a population 4, I believe. Beast Call is a population of 6. And Horn of Heaven is a population of 4 or 5. And I have two of those copies. So Tournament Pack 3 is just um, very, very, very off center normally. So um, the cards themselves aren't that rare, but the cards in Gym at 10 is what makes these so rare and hard to find as a Gym Mint 10 collector. So those come in at number seven. At number six, we have a regular Rainbow Dragon. We have a regular Elemental Hero Chaos Neos. So if you guys are familiar with Old School Yu-Gi-Oh, you're probably going to be prepared for what's next. We have a misprinted Rainbow Dragon. And the rarest of them all, a misprinted Rainbow Dragon with the Elemental Hero Chaos Neos artwork on it. So, obviously, um, pretty poor production uh, quality there. And really cool kind of misprints, having the wrong title on the wrong, ar wrong artwork and the wrong artwork on the wrong card. And you just don't see see many of these pop up anymore, especially for anything reasonably priced. And I'm very fortunate to pick, pick both these misprints up when I did many years ago and uh, definitely cool as my buddy actually pulled a copy of this back in the day. So I will always hold on one uh, to kind of remind me of that fun memory. All right, so at six, I'm gonna specifically highlight one prize card. We have Crush Card Virus, Mint 9, um, probably a couple of those in the honorable mention are a little rare based on population report, but I just, I felt like this one deserved a, uh, video, uh, kind of spotlight of its own and just a very iconic card that was very playable and, uh, just, a a, a card you're not going to find for, <laughs> for any, uh, you're going to have to really pay up to, to get a card like this. And very, very deserving and, and well so, in my opinion. But this comes in at number six on my list of rare, t rare items. And I think there's a population of four and, or four in mint nine and four in mint ten maybe or something like that. So uh, less than a population of ten in mint condition for a crush card. And then up next, we have Vice Dragon. So... This is another misrelease card, kind of on par with the Dark Paladin, except Dark Paladin was pulled a lot more. This was supposed to be in a dual disc version, and for some reason that got canned, that release of this card, but it snuck into Raging Battle um, Special Edition boxes. And this currently has a population, I think, of 10 in Gym and 10 condition, um, but there's not a lot of loose copies floating around either, so... Definitely a unique uh, part of history in Yu-Gi-Oh! And that's why it made my slot of number five on rare cards. All right, for number four, we definitely have a treat here. We have a 
A lot going wrong here. We have Trihorn Dragon on a Gate Guardian artwork and a Guy of the Dragon Champion on a Thousand Dragon artwork. No Eye of Anubis, reverse foiling, and then these are not factory cut. Um, the story I've always heard is there was one sheet of this printed and then the person that had that sheet um, cut these or got them cut by a laser cutter, just square cut, and then sold them off as a pair. And I think I got this pair for around $60 many years ago. And I'm very glad I did. And I would hate to know how much these would go for now as they are very cool and very unique and rare. So that was number four. Number three, um, I'm just a sucker for very unique items. I'm sure others exist like this and especially in other sets and things like that. But I have... I uh, just purchased both of these not too long ago. I got, um, I think, all the commons within the two sheets here for Magic Ruler. Um, it was just super nostalgic when I saw the item. I'm like, I'm going to bid on these. And both went for a price that I thought was fair um, for me to buy. So uh, the original 2002 Magic Ruler common sheets. Uh, just had never seen them before. I know that I'm sure others exist. Um, but really just brought back the nostalgia because I, I really ripped open probably more Magic Ruler than any other set as a kid. So that set's always been really cool and nostalgic to me. So glad I could pick those up. And that lands at number three on my list of rare items in Yu-Gi-Oh! And then number two, I've seen one other listed on eBay. I think it's maybe still there. But it's a sealed Starter Deck Yu-Gi and Starter Deck Kaiba case. So five Starter Deck Kaiba, five Starter Deck Yu-Gi first edition and just um an item that should have never been kept sealed as you know they, they were all over the country should have been ripped open and sold 20 years ago i remember walking into my gas station in my hometown and seeing that exact display so just really brings back the memories and just a very unique rare item as there are you know potentially five starter deck kaiba blue eyes and five starter deck you know dark magicians that artwork from the anime so just you know, the no, there it's known what's in there, but a lot of unknown still. So a very, very unique rare item. And then last but not least, number one on my list of rare items um, is Shrink, Shawn and Jump Championship. And what makes this number one is um, there are under 40 in the world and there are no PSA 10s and only one BGS 9.5. And that is the one in my hands here. I was, uh, you know, just happened to be in the right place at the right time. And um, did a, the guy had had it raw. And I, I, this is the most I've ever spent on one card cash wise. And I bought the card and the rest is history. And I have the only Jim Mint copy of Shrink in the world uh, as of yet, you know. Things could always happen, but it's just notoriously off-centered, and this one was just so well-centered, and very glad I could have uh, this copy in my collection. So, I think I had about, you know, 15 or so items, uh, including the honorable mention of my uh, rarest items in my collection. Some stuff you don't normally see, so hopefully you guys really enjoyed. Um, let me know your favorite, or uh, maybe something that uh, I, you might know I have that I might have missed on uh, that you thought should have made the list or just you know any comments like that. I like reading comments and replying and things like that. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, please subscribe. You know, I don't post that often, but when I do, I try to make it, you know, good content for you guys. So subscribe if you have not. And as always, thanks for watching.